Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We got our GT6 out of storage. It's been great weather in Chicago, and so we wanted to take it for a drive. Uh, we brought it back to our garage from the storage facility, and one of the first things we did was to check all of the fluids. The coolant was a bit low, and that's worrying because obviously you need coolant to keep the engine at an optimal temperature and keep it from overheating. And so what we want to do is we want to find the source of that leak, uh, scientifically, rather than just throw parts at it. Uh, it could be any number of things. It could be anything from uh, leaking hose to uh, bad head gasket potentially to a cracked block. Um, so it's going to be pretty important to find out where that leak is coming from. Hopefully it's something simple, uh, but I've got just the tool for the job. The tool in question that we're going to use is a coolant pressure tester. Uh, it's basically just an air pump it's got a gauge on one end so you can see how much pressure you're pumping in, a special fitting on the other end, and it comes with a series of different uh, radiator caps. A lot of these you can use in more modern vehicles by attaching it to the coolant reservoir, uh, but we don't need that. We've got just the perfect fitting for our GT6. So let's get it connected, put some pressure in it, and see if we can figure out is it holding pressure or is it leaking, and if it's leaking, maybe we can find out where. Now it goes without saying, you want the engine to be cold when you do this. Never open a coolant system with a hot engine. Uh, you could burn yourself very easily. It's extremely dangerous, so just don't do it. Uh, make sure, by the way, a common maintenance item, you want to make sure that you replace these coolant caps from time to time. Uh, but in any case, let's get this one in place. Wherever it's leaking, it's coming out pretty quick because what I don't see is pressure building. So at this point, you want to listen. You might be able to hear a hissing, which I do. From around here. All right, here's another trick for you. This is just a bottle of soapy water. And you want to spray down any areas that might be suspect. And try pumping up again. Now with the soapy water, hopefully we'll get to see some air bubbles. Oh, look at that. Right here. We've got our hoses not connecting very well at all. It's probably about time to change these out anyway. Uh, I will have to order some hoses because the last spare set that I have are on a car that is now in Colorado. Mike, you're welcome. Uh, so anyway, let's get some hoses. We need to replace these anyway. They're getting a bit long in the tooth. And that should take care of our leak so we can keep the coolant inside the engine. Okay, it is a bit of a mess down here. There's a lot of oil. This engine is going to end up coming out anyway, uh, but not until I have to. Uh, I've got other projects going, so I kind of want to just keep this on the road for now. Anyway, though, uh, when I'm about to drain the coolant and get to work on the bottom hose, but anytime that you're down here, you want to check on these Triumph engines for crankshaft end float. You want to check on this pulley, uh, and you want to see the back and forth motion on it. Uh, you're basically looking for how much play does it have in, in either direction. And the way to do that is to set up a dial indicator, which I shall do now. Yeah, I'm seeing about six thousandths of movement in here. Six, maybe a maximum of eight. Uh, the clearance listed in the shop manual is between four and eight thousand. So since we're at eight, we're technically in the clear, and we don't have to worry about the crank end float being too far out. Although being at eight, that's going to be one of the first things that we want to tighten up 
when this engine does come out for a rebuild. These are actually twisting off fairly easily, but if you need to, you uh, just a set of channel locks on the, on the hose and twist it at first with a set of pliers. There's our hose that was leaking. These must be kind of recent because they're all coming off very easily. Not a lot of room in between here and here, and so this hose is probably the biggest pain to get off. But, all right, I'm also going to take this opportunity with the hose out of the way to change the temperature sensor because it was reading a little bit high, even though measured with a thermometer on the engine, it wasn't that hot. this clamp get it where it's just snug enough where it's not going to slide down but don't tighten it until you get the bottom one in place otherwise you could be twisting the hose There's some heater hoses that I want to replace, so I'm not going to fill it with coolant yet, but we can test to make sure that we have fixed our problem by pumping up the system. Obviously without the coolant it's going to take longer to pump it up. Let's go leave it a little bit higher. Now in theory, uh, what you would want to do, and this is what we're going to do now, it's at 7 PSI. I'm going to leave it there so I can come back in a few minutes, make sure that it hasn't lost any pressure. All right, we're back, and we're still at 7 PSI. So the system is no longer leaking, and we can get this thing back on the road soon. And that's it, we're done. Uh, like I said, quick one this week. It was just a leaking hose, but that's uh, something you need to be able to find. There are tools to help you find it if it's a small leak. And so even though this one was a bit larger and we probably would have been able to see if we just popped the hood while the engine was hot, it's better to not go for a drive and have a hose burst. Uh, better to do it at home, make sure that you've got the proper tool. You can actually pick those up. I just bought one online. Um, you don't need a particularly sophisticated kit for a car this old. You just don't. Uh, so anyway, hope that helps. If you've got questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. 
sorry, Neely, are we boring you? <laughs> Can we hurt you, weirdo?